I know it's a miracle. You can't believe your eyes. What is this? Okay, so I've gotten back to my soda fountain thing. We're, we're going to do it. We're going to work on it some more because this is just ridiculous. This is the worst channel ever. So if you've kept up with my channel and you've seen the first first episode of this tutorial, you know that I've been procrastinating on this bag for, let's just say, almost a year now. I do apologize for the wait, but I feel today I'm pretty much done with all my projects. So I was like, I need to finish this bag because it was looking at me and it was just like, girl, it's time. So last, last time when we left off, I was doing this, which is basically a circle that fits over here as a lid. I was saying that it would be best once you make this part to put this down on paper and measure out the bottom so that way you have a good size for the lid to go over, which I can't close right now because I have one hand. And then I took um, vinyl, like a long vinyl strip and my circular part and I sewed it. Now when you do this part, it is very tricky, which is where I kind of got, honestly, I got, this is, this is where I got frustrated because it was really hard to keep the, the, the circle as circular as possible and neat. As you can still see here, there are some puckers. But I'm just going to roll with it because it's just, it's so hard to work with. It's probably one of my pretty ambitious projects. My Fabergé egg one that I'm going to work on next. I was going to do it today, but I just, I'm not in the mood to have a huge mess of paper mache because that's what I have to start off with first to make the, the mold. So um, once you do this, once you sew it around, it's going to be kind of bulky. So on the inside, you need to cut... Um, little lines towards the the seam and little triangles where are you oh god i'm sorry little triangles and once you cut out little triangles all around not cutting into your stitch line but right up to it little cut out little triangles it'll lie a little bit better and then you're going to have a cut out of some really heavy interfacing to put on the inside here and then you're going to do the same thing for like the lining of this lid Okay, this is all pretty much, I mean, there's really no pattern to it. You start off with a pattern as I did, and just the way the fabric wants to behave, things scoot around as you're sewing them. So it's a lot of adjusting as you're going. So once you get it adjusted right, just use the, the part you used as a pattern to move on, which is what I'm doing here. That's probably the most frustrating part. So I'm going to sew this around here, do the same thing with the triangles, flip it inside out. And this is going to be like a lining for the inside of the lid. Okay, so I put the lining in on the, the lid. I'm just kind of like pushing it in, the, all the little crevices of the circle part. Probably going to have to resize it just a little bit smaller so that way I can avoid all this ruffly stuff going on. But after you get this perfect, what I wanted to do for the part that you put in the straw I did want to draw a little diagram like a circle up here and maybe another circle in the middle just so that it gives it like a kind of a 3d effect that there's that little part where you push in the the straw and then once we're this is towards the end though and then once I'm done then I was gonna glue this the straw bit that I got um, at the hardware store which remember you buy these little straw thingies in the plumbing section of like Lowe's or Home Depot. So remember that, super cheap. Okay, so let me correct this. And then once I correct it and I get rid of all the little ruffles, I'm going to trim it a little bit. I had marked out about half an inch and then I'm going to do a really wide top stitch to join these two layers once I'm completely done trimming and everything and make this edge real nice and neat. Okay, cool, bye. So now I've, I've finished the, the top. So the next couple pieces that we're gonna work on, I do want to mention when we attach, cause the, the purse is gonna be assembled, the top just doesn't come off like that. It, it doesn't do that. It has two little rectangles in the back that attach to the purse and the lid. 
So when the lid comes off, this little rectangular piece is holding the lid onto the purse. So cut out two little rectangles like that. And now we're gonna work on the lining of our bag, which you don't have to do it again in vinyl. Um, you can choose any kind of fabric you want for the lining. Just reuse the same pattern you used to make this part. And then at the bottom of your bag, trace, trace a circle out and also use that for your lining because you're gonna need this piece and then the bottom circle piece that goes here for the lining. Sew it together, sew the cone first, and then attach the circular part to the bottom. And then once you do that, make sure you give yourself a good amount of seam allowance, especially for the top, just to make sure that there's no uneven parts that are sh too short and they show the, the, in the heavy interfacing. And then once you do that, drop it in, and then we're gonna move on to doing the huge, the, the big eyelets that go here and here for the chain of our bag. So let's work on the lining first and then we're gonna go with the eyes, the eyelets, the grommets, okay? Next step, as I was saying, do your lining, <clears throat> which I have done. Here's what my line looks like. I chose velvet, ah, ah, cause I had some. So when you drop it in, what I'm gonna do just to keep it from the lining like coming out of the bag, I'm gonna put a little bit of tacky glue down in this area so that way the bottoms just stick and it doesn't like if you pull stuff out of your purse it doesn't snag onto your lining and pull it out of the purse and then you gotta like pack it back in so I'm gonna do that so just after you do that drop it in push it down hard so that way the the glue or whatever you're using sticks to the bottom of, of the bag and the lining and then see see how I said it's it's always much better just to have a whole bunch coming out than if it was too short you'd have to like start over again so it's always just good to have this so once you have your lining all perfectly packed in and it's ready to go give it a little trim around so it can be the same length as your bag then on the sides of our bag as I had stated in the first video and I'll just repeat it again. You're going to want to go with the this grommet kit. And it's a 10 set kit with 1.11 centimeter um, grommets. And you can find this size in the drapery section. I Again, I got this at Joann's or I'm sure any drapery section of any craft store. But that's where I got this size. Because you're going to need this size along with your little toggle buttons. Which will be connected to the chain. So they, they'll be on the inside of the bag through the grommet. So that way when it comes through the little the little circle, it, it gets stuck because it's like a long weird shape. Okay, so now I've already trimmed. I've trimmed my lining, it's all set in there. But now we need to just finish this before we can move on to the little grommet part here. So what I did was I cut out an inch and a half wide strip um, again, the length of the strip will depend on how, what the circumference of the top of your bag is. Yours may differ from mine, it probably will, or I don't know, but you know, it's just one of those things you'll have to measure as you go. But I, this is an inch and a half, and what we're going to do is finish the top, which basically I'm just going to put this over a little bit and then fold it down all the way around my bag, and then I'm going to sew at the edge right here. In on my the largest stitch that I have on my machine and then I'm gonna do that all the way around the bag so I'm gonna sew real close to the edge here and fold this down finish it and then once we do that then we can go ahead and move on to our grommets okay so now I'm just gonna talk about placement for the grommets it is gonna go on each side of your bag I'm going to estimate the top of the grommet to be down an inch. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. So, mm, eyeball it a little bit. And just kind of mark it. Where the top of it goes. And I am using the ones that I was talking about. <clears throat> oh shit. To get uh, in the drapery section. So once you have this little marking at the one inch, kind of like 
because you want to line it up with the top of this. That's where it's going to lay. So once you have that, you just lay it down. Because you will have to cut a circle out. So right there where I marked is like this. Oops, hold on. It's zooming in on the wrong thing. Or focusing. Put this damn Sharpie away. So once you have the, your, the center point of the circle marked, which is right there and right here, this mark is an inch from the top of, of the grommet. So the top of the grommet is going to be an inch from the top of the, of the cup. And that's the center point. And then you're going to get like um, an X-Acto knife or a, try even a drill bit. You probably could maybe with better results. But you're gonna have to make a circle that is big enough to fit, oh God, to fit, where's the, to fit this through, okay? So once you make a circle big enough for this to go through, just to sit through like the circle, then, and I'll show you the little mallet, or an anvil or whatever they call it in this kit. Look, see how big they are. See how big this is? So you'll need a hammer. And what you do is just kind of like, mm, let's call it male and female part. So this would be the female part. This would be the male part, right? Obviously. Um, so you'll put, let's say, the female part down, uh, down first. You'll fit it on the, the anvil here and then, but you'll have, you, you have to position the bag. So this will be, let's say you already have your, your hole. This will go underneath and it'll kind of poke through the hole that you made. So you have to do this in between the, the layers of the bag. Here, I'm going to use a, a napkin. Pretend this is your bag. So you'll put this there, and then, you know, you'll kind of press it through. Then, you take your male part, and you position it over the female part. Like that. And then once you position it over that, then you put the little thing here, you get your hammer and you, you bash it in. Now don't do this on your tile floor or your wood floor. It needs to be concrete because this is such a heavy grommet. You don't want A, miss the whole thing and crack your tile with the hammer, hammer or B, hit it properly and it still ends up cracking your tile or your wood floor, whatever. So it's best to do this outside or in your garage on a concrete floor. It's very tough. It'll it'll take the hammering, you know. So please do it like that. So remember, you'll put the female part on top of the little anvil thing, and then you'll put the bag, you'll put, you know, you'll put, position it over the hole in the bag, and then you'll put the male part over it, fit it and you can kind of fit it by feeling around and just pushing it. It kind of goes in. It kind of holds its place, right? And then this with your hammer, bash it, bash it in real good. And then it should, you know, be, it should be all good. I'm going to give this a little try. Oh my God. And just quickly, I know I said try a screwdriver. I just tried that with the drill bit. Don't do it. You'll F up your purse. Oh my God, I'm so lucky. My purse could have been just ruined. Let me move out of the way so you can see this at least. So I have my anvil underneath. Everything set. Let me switch hands. And the little, the, this little metal thing might get stuck when you're ready to pull it out. 
So don't freak out. That happens. Just slowly twi twist it upwards and it'll come off. Damn, I got this old ass hammer. It twists off. I swear to God, it's gonna give me a black eye one of these days. I swear to God. Why do I use it? It has sentimental value. That's why I use it. In case you're wondering. Oh shit. It came off the anvil. Damn it. All right, but you get the idea, right? Just kind of hammer it in. All right, I'm going to continue here. Carry on. Okay, so if anybody's curious, um, if you're having problems doing this, if you are attempting this bag, I, like I said in the beginning earlier, I, I put the, the, the vinyl around the top and I sewed with my machine. Now, I didn't mention it before because some machines... I've noticed, especially like the newer ones, you can get away with sewing really thick stuff. So it depends on your machine. But um, I know f for my my knowledge that I know, my other machine that I normally sew on will not sew leather or heavy vinyl. Even if I have the leather needle in it, it just, it won't do it. I don't know why. So I use my Spartan to sew any kind of leather or heavy materials. So I do have a leather needle and I have heavy duty um, red thread for that just in case you're wondering and it did sew just fine so now what we're gonna do is sew on the little rectangle to our lid now when you're working with vinyl you don't want to use pins because they leave holes behind when you take them out so it's always best to use like bobby pins or uh, paper clips clothes pins things like that so I have this positioned on here so I'm going to sew under I'm going to sew a line here and a line here just to secure the little rectangle flap to my lid and then I'm going to go and see if I can if I can manage to make this fit under here to sew this to my bag. So I'm just going to do this. Try and take out my bobby pin. And when you are sewing with heavy ma materials and you've never done so on your machine, just do a test run first, you know, get two pieces of your of your heavy material and try and sew it and if the tension is you know off or you just have to fix that you know always do a test piece to see if your machine can do it if not um, you know try changing the needle looking at your manual all those things so I have that sewn on let me just place the lid on top of my bag be about down here I'm gonna see if I can if I can sew it since I can't really put a bobby pin this far down, like this is kind of an odd place, I'm going to get a pencil and I'm just going to like mark out the placement of my little rectangle here so I know just to kind of fit it together like a puzzle piece. And I'm going to sew it. Let me try and sew it now. Unless you have maybe like a quilting machine or that has a really long ex like extension base I don't know so I'm probably gonna try and glue it and then maybe hand stitch it maybe not so low I can clean this up because it's just pencil but you know where there's a will there's a way I'll figure out how to attach this to that and so will you I know it so figure out a way to attach the flap to your purse see like when I do these you know I like I said I always make them as I'm doing the project because it's always best to show my mistakes so that when you make your bag you've learned from my mistakes and what not to do and then everything works out better 
but I mean this this bag's I love this bag McDowell's you know it and then I was thinking too because um, it is fraying a little bit here and on the side to make it more of a neat type thing um, I'm gonna get some some tulip like puff, like kind of like puffy paint in the red and I'm just gonna kind of like seal in the edges just to give it like a really cool looking 3d border and I think I'm not at this point I think I want to do it in red but I, I could do it in white too because I have white uh, puffy paint so try and figure this part out we're almost there we're almost done I'm gonna do my border that border that's optional to you um, and then we'll just we'll just continue we're gonna finish this bag okay it's gonna happen all right bye Okay, so now I'm letting my little border dry that I put with the fabric paint. So we're going to move on to the chain of the bag. And then... So we're going to move on to the chain of the bag. I have a little, some little jump rings. I switched the toggle button. I actually like this one better. And then this chain. I bought, uh, this was the one I bought. It was those Blue Moon Beads brand. And it was, I thought I was going to have to cut it, but I was looking at it and measuring myself. And it's 42 inches, and that's actually what works for me <clears throat> with my height and how long I want the purse to be. So that worked out perfectly. I don't have to chop up the chain. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn it. Let me see if I can get it. See how there's like a little space? Let's see if I can get it to focus I don't know I can't get it to focus but there's a part where the this is where the chains the little link splits so when you open it you always open them you never open them like when you're opening up the, the link you never pull them apart that way you always twist it one forward and one back to open it okay So when you open it, you open it like that, as I was stating. You, ne you never pull it apart like this. You kind of like push one plier back and then pull one forward <clears throat> so it twists like that. So let's get our little jump ring. And do the same thing, open it up. Oh, we don't have to open it up, I'm sorry. Just kind of, or here, let's feed it through this. So yeah, let's, let's open it up. Let me grab it. Because it's so tiny. And kind of work it through there. And then close it. not even focusing I'm sorry so yeah get your little get the o-ring or the yeah over that jump ring and then what we want to do is turn our bag to where the grommet was let's see so it's gonna be like this so you got to do this while the toggle button is inside <clears throat> your purse Let me see if I can pull this in here. Probably much easier. Yeah, it'll be much easier like this. So I got it through. Do, do, do. 
It was kind of tricky. Okay, so now I can close this one. So yeah, see? I have the toggle button inside. And that's, you're gonna do that for the other side. And then once we have all that done, then we can worry about gluing our straw onto the top of our bag. And yeah. Okay, so let's keep going. So the time has come. We're going to hot glue mainly because I'm out of my other glue, but this should be okay. We're going to take our little straw, remember? And let's find the center point. Move this damn chair. The center point of the of the circle. Okay. Let's give it a big dollop of hot glue. Mine's been cooking for a while. And then just kind of set it. So just hold it. Let it set, maybe add a little more to the side. one of those things where you got to kind of hold it or I don't know what could I find to lean it up against something okay so I got that kind of leaning up against it gonna let it dry fully then clean up the little hot glue gun hairs and then uh, we'll see this bag in action my McDowell's home of the Big Mick not Big Mac but yeah I'm pretty proud of it there are some things that are imperfect uh, you know again learning learning curve here um, if I were to do this again, I would learn from my mistakes more, but I really like the way it came out. The inside of the bag looks beautiful. The grommets were set beautifully with that tool. They look gorgeous. The toggle button worked perfectly with this chain. So let me just go about that chain because I tried to get a chain with the chain links as thick as the Moschino one, the way that one looks. So this one that I got, if you're curious, again, it's from Blue Moon Beads. 42 inch, 1.06 meters. Um, what else? Does it mention anything? Product number, in case you're trying to find it, BM20643, if that is the product number. Because the Moschino one, the chains are about this, this chunky. So that really gives it the look, the straw from the plumbing section I absolutely love it again you can fully customize your label you can do like man tears unicorn piss or what you know like whatever you want to do good burger like whatever you know it's up to you creativity is up to you you can make this to your liking some of the, the imperfections I have that I just wanted to point out because again you know I'm not perfect and I do want to I don't want to pretend like this bag is all that and a bag of chips or whatever so as you can see here, there is some puckering when I was sewing it in a circle, which I did mention before. It, it was a challenge trying to sew the circle with the vinyl because it just kept scooting around as I was doing it. So in the future, maybe I will have to get like a Teflon foot or something. And that was with me doing it with a walking foot too. Like it's still scooted around. So I have to figure out how I can avoid that and make it you know more neater for next time in case I do want to make another one 
Um, but yeah, let's, we'll see the bag in, in the works right now. Thank you.